back here at the National Firearms Museum here at NRA headquarters in Fairfax, Virginia. I'm here with my good friend Phil Schreier, senior curator of the NFM, and we're talking about fakes in this series. And wow, uh, maybe we can call this one fabulous fakes or fantastic fakes. That is an interesting looking farm. Phil, tell us about this fake. Well, you know, John, uh, this, this is one of my favorites. Uh, this is a, uh, a colt uh, that was made uh, originally percussion and then converted after the Civil War era to fire cartridges. Okay. So it's got, uh, it's got the conversion, uh, you know, deal going on with it. Uh, it's uh, silver plated, uh, engraved, full, full coverage engraving on the barrel and frame. And it has this very gaudy grip to it um, that is uh, trying to mimic the, the grips made by Tiffany and Company of, of New York. Oh, yes, the Tiffany and Company the of New York. The Tiffany and Company. Yes. I mean, we all know what our wives and girlfriends think of those powder green blue boxes. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. You know, they want to make our hearts <laughs> skip a beat. They need to have something like this in a powder green How blue box. Uh, but once upon a time, Tiffany made uh, not only, uh, you know, uh, embellished Colts, they actually made swords for the U.S. Really? U.S. Cavalry during the uh, the Civil War as well. How cool is There's that? There's some actual Tiffany and Co. Marks sabers. Wow. Um, so this is uh, a fake for many obvious reasons. I was going to say, I can imagine one of the one of the real Tiffany uh, Colts would be worth oh, hundreds of thousands. <laughs> Forget it, no question. First off, the engraving is not Nimsky engraving. You can look at it and see that it's much more amateurish more attempt, crude, yeah. you know, than a standard Colt factory engraving of Louis D. Nimsky from the time period. Uh, the other thing is, is that the, the silver, it's all gone mm. on the grips. Tiffany grips are silver grips, not plated mm -hmm. grips over a bronze, you know, material. Second, you look at the uh, figuring on the, uh, on the eagle here and the d detail and definition, it's very crude. This is almost uh, a, like what you might call a lost wax copy of, of a tif set of Tiffany grips. Jeez. And once again, imagine, as crude as it is, the amount of work it went to replicate that, to come up with a mold of that same firearm to go ahead and try to fake it. Yeah, and, and, and to do such a job that anybody that's seen a real one would immediately look at this and go, that's junk. Right. Uh, so the Colt Collectors Association in Houston, Texas, probably about 1992 or so, uh, I took the collection of these fakes from the Red Jackson collection back to Texas and displayed them at the Colt show. We had a guy walk in and he goes to this specific gun. He <laughs> says, what's, what's fake about that? And I said, well, the grips, they're, they're bronze, they're right. not silver. Uh, the, uh, you can, you know, on a real one, you can count the feathers in right. the feather, you know. Uh, these are just crude cuts. Uh, the engraving on this is, well, I just spent uh, 80000 and my gun's right, and it looks just like this. And I know my gun's right, and it was wow. eight, I spent 80000 on it. And I said, sir, this gun is as wrong as it gets Jeez. on more than one level. There's nothing correct about this gun, and it's not worth 800 much less 80000 80, Oh, no, 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 he says, no, my gun, my gun is right. It looks exactly like these two are, well, what's the serial number? Maybe they're consecutively numbered. And I said, would you like to see a real Tiffany? Oh, I have a real Tiffany <laughs> gun. It's just like yours. And he said, well, <laughs> let me show you. So we went over to Marty Lane's table. Mm -hmm. And Marty Lane, a well-known dealer in, in New York City, purveyor some of the finest Colts ever made. I said, Marty, I saw you had a Tiffany 62 under your table this morning. Could I show this gentleman the gun? And Marty pulls out the gun. It was in a white athletic sock. I keep my $80,000 guns in a white Of course, yes. Gun. So he pulls it out, and as he pulled it out, the guy could see the, res the brilliance of the silver plating, mm -hmm. the, the depth and, and, and beauty and detail in the engraving. And as I pulled that sock down over this, the 
just the, the brilliance of the yeah. plating of this gun and the silver. When I got to this part and revealed how detailed and finely sculpted that tif these Tiffany grips were, the color drained out of him, oh. right, right like a thermometer hidden, heading towards the uh, sub-freezing mark. Jeez. He looked at that gun, looked at me, said not a word, and walked straight out the door. Never saw him again. Oof. And I said, this is a real Tiffany gun. And he just left. Wow. And I felt bad for him. Oh, yeah. But, you know, he was adamant right. about that he had been right. And I was like, this is what the real stuff looks yeah. like. Yeah. Um, <sighs> I mean, it, a harsh lesson learned, but at least, you know, at least he knew you were able to prove to him because, you know, geez, that's a horrible thing to do to somebody else. Not what you did, but to sell someone a fake like that. And like I said, a guy, someone without your level of experience and expertise could obviously got fooled by that oh, fake. Oh, yeah. And, you know, a sucker and his money are soon parted. Wow. A fool and his money are soon parted. And, uh, you know, the whole business is about never underestimate the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's... Good. Thanks for doing this for us, by the way, Phil, to give us more education, us, us more kind of, uh, you know, our guys who don't have your expertise about fakes to be very careful, especially you're getting into the into the collecting game. So how can folks come here or to Springfield to the National Farms Museums and see some real treasures, not this you fake You want to see stuff. some real Tiffany golds, <laughs> some real Tiffany's. You need to come visit the National Firearms Museums. We're located, the National Firearms Museum is located in Fairfax, Virginia off Interstate 66. It's open seven days a week from 9.30 to 5. Plenty of free parking. We're also at the National Sporting Arms Museum in Springfield, Missouri. Again, that's open seven days a week. Plenty of free parking there. If you can't visit us off the interstate, visit us on the internet 24-7 at nramuseums.com. And please be careful with considering any firearm of any value. Just be careful. And yeah, just know what you're doing. Yeah. And if you don't know, find someone who does. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Phil, for another great installment here of the Curator's Corner. Thank you, John.